Today I'm going to show you how you can set up a custom drop down menu that shares database content. What's up you guys? Thanks for tuning in with your boy Nino from Creatively Nino. I got a tutorial for you guys today on how you can create a custom drop down menu from your database or your data collection. So if you're struggling on like how can I make a interactive drop down menu, this tutorial is for you. It's pretty cool. It's a little challenging, but overall, I think you're really going to like it. And if you do like it, hey, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss another Wix tutorial like this one. So let's jump in and check this thing out. So the first thing that you guys need to do is go ahead and grab an input text. OK, and how you find that is going to your add button and you're going to input and you go to text input and then you drag the sucker on over like that. All right. And then also you want to go ahead and create a container box and a repeater. So if you don't know where those things are, you can just head on over to box here. And when you go to box, you'll have your boxes here and you can scroll down and pick the certain container boxes that we have here. We just have a white one. Um, so just check that out. And then if you need to get to a repeater, you can go here to your list and just drag on over a blank repeater here. OK. All right. And so how we have this set up is we have a repeater and then inside of this repeater, we actually have a another drop. I mean, sorry, another container box and this container box is going to be useful so that we can style up our highlights okay of the text here okay uh, so this will be the highlight of the navigation of the arrow up and the arrow down so that is everything that you guys need to know about the setup let me go ahead and hop on right into this code okay so here is the page code and what I have starting off here is I'm importing the Wix data. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that module. Um, and then also here, uh, I'm actually creating the colors here, like I said before, and also the size of the array and the current index. Okay. This current index is starting at negative one because our array item here is starting at zero. So that means if we put it at negative one, nothing will match okay so that means you'll see that in a few here we have the gray color and then also here we have the white color so our on ready function here uh, as you can see we're actually putting in a key on key press listener okay so this is an on key press listener so when we click inside of this input box here uh what we're going to do is we're going to listen in and sh and fire back events okay so this is going to be on key press so whenever you're pressing into your keyboard it's going to fire off this event all right so i have this set timeout here if i collapse that real quick as you can see this bracket says uh this is a function for set timeout so this bracket is saying everything inside of here is going to run after 50 milliseconds all right and so what's going to happen is we're going to create this conditional statement this is an if else statement and in this if else statement we're going to check to see if this value here has a length of zero if it has a length of zero it's going to reset everything so that means this current index equals negative one and that means no selection is going to be had and then we're going to collapse everything here okay so it's going to be collapsed and then also the repeater box is going to be hidden all right in our else statement here we have a switch conditional statement okay and with this switch conditional statement we're going to go through some key strokes okay so we're going to go through some key strokes definitely i would advise you guys to head over to mozilla to learn a little bit more about event keys so that you can know which keys on your keyboard is labeled as such all right and so that is how I got all of these here for these case statements. All right, so we're going to start with enter. So with enter, what we're going to do is basically simple. We're going to enter that information. So whatever the current index is on. So that's why we have the current index here at the top outer shell of this on ready function. What we're going to do is we're going to set that item to whatever it is inside of this drop down repeater item. OK, so we're going to go into the repeater, which is an array, and we're going to go inside that array. This is how you can go inside of that array. All right. You put some square brackets here 
and then you go ahead and put a number in here. Our number is gonna be substituted by this current index. So whatever our current index is at that time. All right, and then we're gonna go inside of here and get country name. Now this is coming from a recent tutorial that I did, which was on filtering data set. Okay, so definitely go check that out in the right hand corner as I speak right now. This is a very helpful tutorial for you guys to just learn a little bit more about how you can filter based on a dropdown, okay? And not a customized dropdown that we're doing here. All right, so definitely check that out, but I'm pulling from that database or that collection that I created in that tutorial. So definitely check that out to see what the database is all about. I'm actually gonna go into it briefly, but all right, so this is what I'm getting here. I'm getting the country name, all right? And then I'm doing the collapsing and the hiding of the repeater box. And if you guys wanna go ahead and unmask this here and run this console log, you can, so that then you know exactly that this dot then method worked, okay? So, now after that is done we're going to go ahead and break out of this case statement all right and then that breaks out of the whole entire switch conditional statement all right so let's go down to the next one so i actually put arrow left and arrow right for other people's conveniences if they want to go ahead and put arrow up for arrow left or arrow right or arrow down uh function for arrow right uh however you guys would like you guys can put that in there, but I just left that there for you guys. Let your ima imagination run wild. All right, so now for this arrow up, uh, I'm actually gonna go to this function and how I'm gonna go to this function is I'm gonna hold down control and then I'm gonna hover over top of this function, okay? And then I'm gonna click it. So now that we're at our function for arrow up, we're going to go ahead and find the current index that is greater than zero. If the current index is greater than zero and it's true, for this conditional statement, we're going to go ahead and subtract it, okay? So what it's saying here is it's saying current index equals current index minus one. Okay, so basically that is this whole entire statement right here. It's just a shorter version so that you guys don't have to type out this whole entire thing repetitively. All right, and then also we're gonna go into refresh repeater and momentarily. Basically what this is doing is it's going to go and scroll up, okay? It's going to show that when you're pressing down on that arrow up, it will go up a step in the repeater item list, okay? It's gonna be zero through five because I'm actually getting only five items from the data source, okay? That is my limit that I set for myself. You guys can increase that limit however you would like, but right now I'm just sticking with five. All right, so this else if here is going to say if current index is equal to zero, we're gonna loop that back down to the bottom of the array, okay? So that is why I'm setting it to the size of the array minus one, all right? The size of the array is going to be the length of the array. And that is like the typical, you know, step process of one, two, three, four, the traditional way, right? But in a sense, we're doing minus one because indexes of the repeater starts at zero, okay? So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, okay? So we're gonna say that this is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, okay? And right here we can count with it, which this is, one, okay, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, and five. So that you understand exactly what this is doing here. We're saying size of the array. So I said my limit is going to be five, so it's gonna go to four, okay? So it's gonna be five minus one, which will set your current index to four. All right, and then we're gonna do the refresh repeater. And then if we scroll down, we're gonna go ahead and jump into arrow down function, okay? And essentially what it's doing is it's looking to see if the current index is less than four, okay, in this sense. Now, it might be something different, so it'll be based on the size of the array. But in my example right now, it's going to be four. So if it's less than four, then it's going to add that current index. So as it's doing up here with the current index is minus one, we're gonna just copy that and we're gonna place that down here. And we're just going to say plus, all right? 
just so that you understand what this is doing here as well. All right, and so we have an else if statement here. So that is just saying, if this statement doesn't work up here, then go ahead and try this statement here, this conditional statement. All right, and so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna say if current index is equal to four or equal to the size array minus one, then we're gonna set that to zero. And this is how we can make this a continuous navigation, okay? So this will be a continuous navigation and it can go all the way down and then start back up at the top or it can go all the way up to the top and start back at the bottom of the list. So now let's go ahead and scroll back up. And now I um, am at this case statement. I've already done arrow down. So this case statement here for escape is going to be just escaping out of everything. So it's going to delete everything that was inside of this input. And then it's going to reset everything back to its original way. Okay. so. It's gonna take this and it's gonna collapse it and then do a dot then and I actually show this right here uh, just so you can see that. Um, so it's your preference if you want to keep this here or not. All right, basically it's just resetting everything based off of what we had initially had it as. Then we're gonna go into our default. All right, so if all of these case statements here do not equal this event dot key, then we're going to go to the default section of this switch statement. We're going to say current index is equal to negative one. All right, so we can reset that current index and we're gonna say Wix data.query. All right, we're going to query countries and we're querying this country's database. I've talked about that in past tutorials, so definitely go check that out. Right here, as you can see, we have the country's database or the collection. All right, and what we're gonna do is, hey, if this input contains a country name, we're going to go ahead and return those items to the repeater. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get the country names in ascending order and we're going to limit them by five. Okay, so that's why I was talking about where I'm limiting the size of the array. This is basically the size of the array here and we're gonna do find, then we're gonna do this method of dot then and we're gonna get the res, all right? So if data is still inside of this repeater, we want to go ahead and cancel that out. So let's nullify it. So this is how we're gonna nullify it. And then also we're going to say if the res.items.length is greater than zero, then we're gonna show those things, all right? So that's just a check here if, you know, the length is not equal to zero. Now, if the length is equal to zero, then we're going to just hide everything and collapse uh, everything that we have here. All right, if not, and this is true, and this conditional statement is true, we're gonna go into the repeater and we're gonna set those items to that repeater data, all right? And then also we're gonna get the size of the array and it's going to be res.items.length. And then we're going to expand it and we're going to show the repeater box, okay? And so I actually have this other if statement outside of this other if statement or if else statement, um, just in case it runs this and there's nothing there, okay? So if it runs this and there's nothing there and it, it will reset everything. All right, and then we also have a catch method here. So we're gonna catch the error if there is any type of error that happens. So definitely go ahead and you'll see what that is in the console log. And then also you wanna go ahead and collapse and hide it so that it doesn't show any information based on it airing out. All right, so once you break out of that whole thing, then we're gonna go break out of this set timeout and then we should be done with this section of the on ready section. So I'm gonna scroll down here and get to the drop down repeater item ready. So I'm gonna click on the repeater and how you, get to this item ready box here, uh, you want to go ahead to your property events. So you just click that property events if that is not open for you. And you're going to go ahead and click on on item ready. And then that will bring this function up here. All right, so then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go for each of these items inside of this repeater. We're going to label the title uh, dot text equal to the country name. And then we're going to do a conditional statement inside of that to see if the index equals the current index. All right, if that equals the current index, it's going to show that gray, all right, that gray color that we have set on there. And this is setting it to the name box. So that is actually different than the container box, all right? The container box is actually connected to the repeater. Okay, so the repeater container doesn't actually have a style for the background color. So that's why we had to put in 
the box here, the actual container box. So you can see that here, this is the container box. And then if we right click and we go to overlapping items and we go to container, that is the container for the repeater. As you can see, it says container one. If it is container one and we want to choose that based on clicking on it, it's gonna have this on click event listener, okay? And what we're gonna see is that we're going to label that input value as that country name that we clicked on. And then also it's going to collapse that repeater. And then also for the refresh repeater, it is actually doing the same exact stuff that is in here, but it's just doing it for each item, okay? So this is going to do a step process of each of those items and set it based on the color highlight, okay? Or the color regular, which is the regular color. I don't know why I said it that way. Oh yeah, I said it that way so it would be easier for me to type. All right, so basically it's going to reset everything based on where the arrow is, whether you're doing the arrow up or arrow down. So wherever the current index is, it's going to match up with that. And then it's going to share that gray highlight on the container box here, all right, which is called name box. All right, and so that is about it. Let's go ahead and head on over to the database so that I can show you exactly what it's doing. So in the country's database, uh, you can actually see that I don't have the first field name to be title, all right? So I actually need to go into my properties and recheck that to see what the field key name is. And the field key name is the exact same name that I have as country name. And then also you can see the descriptions about the different countries here and the continents and all this information that you can actually add to your repeater if you want to, okay? But right now I'm just going ahead and grabbing the country's name. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. All right, and let's go ahead and preview this bad boy. All right, so as you can see, I'm going to click into this input box and I'm going to type out the word, or no, I'm gonna just put the letter E. So as you can see that it went in there, grabbed that element of E and in the container box, it's looking for everything that has a E in it, okay? Uh, and it's definitely not case sensitive. So it's actually bringing in this Egypt or this Kenya or this Melbourne or Mexico or Peru. Now, if we want to go ahead and put a, let's see, what is common between all of these? Nothing, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Well, if, if we wanted to go ahead and say Egypt, right? So let's go ahead and put a G there. As you can see, everything is updating in real time. All right, let's go back to just the character E, and then I'm gonna put my arrow down. And as you can see, it started it at zero, and now it's gonna keep going, and then it just keeps going infinitely. And then if I do an arrow up, you can see that it's going infinitely up uh, just to pick it. Now, if I press enter on Kenya, it's going to put that name in there okay and it collapsed everything and it's working very well let's go ahead and start that with an e again and as you can see here uh if i click on mexico it actually sets that uh into the this input item and if i wanted to let's say start with e let's go ahead and do an arrow down if we get to peru and we're saying oh no this is not it let me go ahead and escape we're gonna press escape and everything has been reset. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put an E in there again. Let's arrow down and then I'm going to click enter on Peru. Okay, and as you can see, my enter is working right there. My arrow up and down is working. And that is about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely give it a shot. And if you had a hard time following this tutorial, then head on over to my website for further explanation of the code. There's a link in the description of the article below, okay? So if you guys have any questions, drop them below. Thank you so much for watching you guys. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every weekend. Also check out my website to find other tips and tricks about Wix. This helps us do what we do and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you in the next video guys. Okay, ciao.